Well, welcome everybody to this lovely panel discussion with our friends over at Nelvana. They're going to be here to talk about their show Super Wish. So it's an animated children's series from Red Knot. It's a joint venture between Discovery and Nelvana. The series was created by Vanessa Estevez. I'm saying that correctly. I hope so. You are. Thank you. Awesome. And Aiden Thatcher. I think I got that right. And mm -hmm. we are joined also by uh, Daniel Claremont, and he's the animation director. And we're going to be discussing the development and the production that goes on um, into a children's series. So to start off, <clears throat> um, I would like each of you to um, introduce yourselves. You can pick and choose who wants to go first, but uh, just let us know. You know. Tell us about yourself and what's your current role at Nilvana. Cool. Do you want to go first, Adrian? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you go, you go. You go. Uh, I'm, well, my name is Adrian Thatcher. Um, I'm a director at Nalvana. I've been with Nalvana for uh, a little over 20 years. Um, and prior to that, uh, in the animation industry, I was a layout artist with Walt Disney Animation, television animation. Nice. Um, so, yeah, over those 20 years, uh, boy, I've worked on tons of shows at Nelvana, a lot of harmony shows going back to 16. Um, if we remember that series, uh, Ruby gloom, Willis wildlife, scaredy squirrel, bravest warriors, Ollie's pack, and then super wish. And currently I'm starting to direct a reboot of, uh, Barney. So that's, oh, big, yeah. Sick. Okay. Nice. Who's up next? Um, I can go next if you awesome. want. Um, hi everyone, I'm Vanessa Estevez. I'm a supervising creative producer at Nelvana. So I oversee creative of series in both development and current series. Um, and I work on properties from concept to screen and just help guide them through those early stages of development straight through to pitching to buyers. Um, and then once we get our green light, I help establish the core creative team and then kind of oversee um, straight through to final delivery, just ensuring that productions get up and running and that they're maintaining the creative. Um, and then I'm also a co-creator and a writer. Awesome. Very Daniel. skilled writer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Daniel, my man, tell us about yourself. Um, I'm an animation supervisor slash animation director. The title seems to change on whatever page I'm, <laughs> I'm reading. Uh, <laughs> but basically, I lead the animation team. Uh, been with uh, Delvana since uh, 2004, um, and I started in 3D modeling. Uh, I had a number of uh, different roles at Delvana, but always a main uh, focus on 2D animation. Uh, and I've been an animation supervisor uh, for seven years at Delvana. Uh, my first show uh, there was uh, Zuzu Pets, and I got to fly overseas for that one to uh, to help. Uh, manage the animation so that was that was pretty your, exciting your your arms must have got tired <laughs> I swam. i'm also a dad oh the dad joke the dad, the dad joke. Joke. in oh. case <laughs> that's awesome well thanks guys for introducing yourself so um how about we start by um you can let us know like how super wish um was pitched and what like the early meetings between um Nelvana and discovery were like Okay, I I could jump in on this one. Um, yeah, when we pitched Superwish to the networks, uh, Vanessa and I basically had compiled a very detailed pitch package. Um, you know, included included tons of information, the show concept, obviously, but um, information about our main cast, uh, character traits. You know, if if anybody's seen a pitch package in the past, it's kind of all that stuff. Series tone. Uh, a, a little bit about the world, that sort of thing. Um, so ultimately, when you go into pitch, you just need to be able to you need to be able to answer any question that's thrown at mm -hmm. you. So it's just it's a it's a chock a block of information. Um, but when we uh, talked to DKLA uh, for the first time, um, uh, we didn't have to answer any of those curveball questions because they were really taken with it right away. They 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 saw a lot of potential and excitement for the concept of birthdays. Birthdays have been kind of tackled in other series, like episode by episode, sprinkled in here and there. For the longest time, there was a there was an issue with uh, the birthday song was actually not public domain for like forever and ever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's 
it wasn't part of the reason why we put this pitch together, but it definitely helped. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, yeah, we we saw an open window to to kind of attack birthdays, and DKLA loved it, and yeah, they they wanted to work with us. So, when we started talking to them, uh, when they came on board, uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, objective there was to age the show down because when we initially pitched it. It was comedy, what, six to 11? Is that what we classified it? Eight to 12? It was, yeah. had a lot of, had a lot of darker tones. Vanessa okay. and I are big, you know, Star Wars fans. And nice. uh, <laughs> a lot of our points of reference were very layered and detailed for, for a, what is now an upper end preschool property. So we brought it down with the help of DKLA, brought it into that kind of that sweet spot for our target demographic. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Awesome. So um, I guess I can throw a, a nice segue question to Vanessa. Like for those in the audience that aren't familiar with Super Witch, could you like describe the series and the characters? I can. Um, actually, we brought our opening to Ooh. show as well. So maybe I'll do I, Do you want to show the opening or, you know, I'll, let me tell you about it first. I'll give you my little pitch because I've been pitching this one for, I feel like I've pitched it a million times now. <laughs> awesome. Um, but I think we boiled it down to a little uh, healthy chunk that covers everything. And then after I've pitched it, I'd love to share the opening so that everybody has kind of some context when we talk about the characters, they know what we're talking about. Okay. Um, so we would call Super Wish a uh, childish imagination come to life with an underscore. That's really what the series is. It has a very Alice in Wonderland feel to it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's about a boy named Jesse Cameron who makes a not so great wish on his 10th birthday. Uh, it all starts when he wakes up and is really expecting an older kid birthday party. So things like go-kart and laser tags. But he discovers that his mom has thrown him the exact same birthday party he's had for years. So a typical younger birthday party, pin the tail on the donkey, musical chairs, a clown. Um, and she's invited the entire extended family. So it's not quite what he had in mind. And he's a little bit grumpy. And when it comes time to blow out his candles and make that wish... He mumbles under his breath that he wishes his whole birthday party would just disappear. So what Jesse doesn't know is that because it's his 10th birthday, he doesn't get a regular wish. He gets a super wish. And we established in the series that a super wish is this magical, powerful, really special wish that you only get once when you turn double digits for the first time. Mm. So when Jesse kind of begrudgingly makes this wish and says, you know, I wish my whole birthday would just disappear, it actually does. The cake turns into like a cake way. We call it a cake way. Um, this vortex and everything in the room that has anything to do with birthdays is pulled through, including Jesse, his two best friends, and his little cousin, Winnie. So the kids are magically transported to the birthday dimension known as the Happy Land of Birthdays, which is just over my shoulder here. You can see the map. Nice map. <laughs> um, <laughs> and once they arrive, they realize that they are kind of stuck. So the only mm -hmm. way for the kids to get back home is to track down Jesse's super wish, which is now a character in and of itself. Uh, and use it to reverse the magic that sent them all there. So every episode we see is just a different leg of their journey as they discover a new area of the world, try to catch the wish and encounter these birthday traditions that are all living um, and that are like quite big in their stakes. And um, I won't ruin it for you because our season finale is about to air in two weeks, but awesome. they might go home. We'll just say that. And once <laughs> well, I'll add to that, once they're there, uh, they, they encounter this evil foe named Balloonicus. Right. And he once he's got an evil backstory. We won't get into that too much, but well, maybe we will later. But uh, once he discovers that Jesse's uh, wish is on kind of on the run, he decides that if he could track it down first, that he could use it for evil doing. So oh, that's that's a big big part of the series. Is you'll see in the opening is Balloonicus, the evil deflated old balloon. That's awesome. Right. Um, Do we want to run the I, opening? Uh, we do. Uh, I, I don't know where it is. I apologize. Does anyone know where the video is? <laughs> Welcome to me learning how to out. use the internet. Our ghost will have it for us. There we Yay. go. There we go. <laughs> Jesse turned 10, he got a super wish. Uh-oh. He wished the whole birthday away. Jesse and his friend both through time and space. And it up in the happy little birthday. Together on an epic adventure of a lifetime. Trying to get back home. First they've got to find that super wish Be careful what you super wish for Because you just might get your super wish Amazing.
amazing. I love it. Yay. I love kid shows, man. They're so much fun. <laughs> the song Especially always when... gets stuck in your head. It's that's uh, Julie Fader and Graham Walsh, and the song is like we must have heard it thousands of times now, and it always <laughs> makes us dance. <laughs> awesome. I can even attest to that. Like working in studios myself, like when you're working on those like opening sequences, the song will be there for weeks on end <laughs> until you for have better another song to work on. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, I would like to ask, uh, probably ask Daniel. Um, so how long, and anyone else can you know, jump in at this point too, but how long did it take to, de to develop Superwish and um, like how many people were involved in the production? Well, I can, I, as the animation supervisor, animation kind of starts a little bit uh, after a lot of development is done. I think we were like one of the last teams to, to jump on board. Mm -hmm. So I can speak to what uh, what it was like when we when I first uh, got on the show. Um, uh, there was a lot of information that I shared with, uh, or that Adrian and Vanessa shared with me uh, about what the show is about, uh, the personalities of each character. So basically, what motivates them, how they think and feel, their their kind of their role in the the world on the show, uh, like like uh, like Jesse's like the birthday boy, and then there was his cousin when he was the youngest one, little little uh less confident but she develops confidence through the different trials she goes through during the uh during the show so all that backstory was really uh helpful for us when we're planning on on uh the episodes like how like this the situation happens here sadie or, or winnie are going through something how would they approach it like it is storyboarded but we still want to put that thought process into the character mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. so yeah a lot of that stuff is kind of like sorted out uh, near, very, very near the beginning. We also have the writer's Bible that we study. So we get to learn everything about this world that uh, mm -hmm. Vanessa and Adrian came up with. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Um, so how was it um, like similar or different to any other projects that um, you've worked on? Uh, for, for, for me? Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, so I, there's like two parts to this, I guess, uh, because there's a lot of similarities in some ways, but then there was a lot of differences. So when we when we start a show we kind of take what we've learned from the previous show uh -huh. uh, so i've been fortunate to work with uh, uh in 2d digital like with harmony for a long time so you know every show there's like new tools or new techniques new new tips uh you know we learn from the other animators like uh, we share this information so that we can share this with the team um, uh -huh. and then we take that information bring it to the new show so we bring it to super wish and now we're like, you know what? This worked well on the last show, you know? And then we can show this to, to the director for Adrian and, and say like, okay, what do you think of this? Does this work? And then he gives us our, uh, our, the feedback. So we can say like, yeah, okay, more of this, less of that, or can you even do this? Uh, and Adrian's got a good knowledge of, of 2D animation and harmony. So like when something looked like, like, how are we gonna do this? He was also quick to be like, let's do it this way. You know, we know that he knows the tools and, and how they work. The way that it was different though, was because we got to use new tools. So I knew of the master, the master controller is like a, the, I guess the, the big one I wanna uh, speak to here because nice. this was my first show with uh, the master controller, uh, I guess, workspace. Okay. I knew of it, but I never worked with it. So that mm -hmm. was really fun. And we had a lot of um, coordination with our TD, Andrew and his rigging, his rigging team. Mm -hmm. So we could, uh, like, he gave us a good uh, preliminary master controller rig. And then with uh, some testing with myself and the animation crew, we took all that feedback and then we sent it to Andrew. And then we were work able to work with him uh, and his team to get more controls that we wanted on the, on the master controller. Thanks. Do you have it there, Daniel? Did you want to show it? Yes. Oh, yeah, we didn't have it. Sure. So Let me yeah. share the screen as a character rigger myself i love uh setting up mass controllers they're so much fun to work with and they really give animators a better um better tool to get their their poses out so that's awesome yes yeah that's so that's one of the big challenges right like uh, uh, i'm sure everyone who's who's animated in harmony you have to pose your character and then you know you work with pegs it's kind of like I, I compare it to sculpting i say this uh -huh. to my team often because you start with the big chunks, you're going to move the main peg and then the leg peg and then the lower leg peg, and you're going to you're going to pose your character. Then you're going to go fine tune it with the uh, the envelope deformer, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and and so the master controller really speeds up that process, especially especially if you have like poses loaded into it or, mm -hmm. or like we. This one's uh, uh, kind of a early rough here that we have because it evolved. But there is like you can see, I think on, on the right, uh, Jesse's head tilts. So this is something we implemented with uh, with Andrew. So Andrew's like, yes, I can do this, but you need to provide uh, the poses for it. So we had mm -hmm. the team working on it for all the main characters and everyone we did like, uh, I don't think we did a full 360 for this because most of the time we can get that with the main rotation. Yeah. But we did uh, mostly just profile to profile and then up and then down. And then with that, uh, with that red dot, you could basically point the head anywhere. So it was really great to get that pose like down quickly and efficiently instead of moving, you know, the face, the head, the ear, the oh. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I absolutely know. Like when master when they first started messing around with master controllers, just having that flexibility to be able to, you know, quickly get your character and especially to keep the character on model, which is another important thing uh, when you're posing out your character, having that master control already built into the rig is a really handy um, yeah. tool for the animators to have. So that's really awesome. I'm glad to hear that you guys are using using master controllers on this show. And, and then also, I, like, <laughs> it's like two years ago, it's evolved even more. Like I'm on a <laughs> show and now it's like littered with controls. I love it. Also yeah. too, Daniel, th does that speed up the process for you? Like if I say to you, hey, can Jesse do this? Like you could quickly find out rather than yes. it taking a long time. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why you were so fast. Oh, <laughs> it's all the yeah, computer, it wasn't me, man. it was all software. <laughs> <laughs> See, AI. Mm. Oh boy, that's a whole other conversation though. <laughs> Let's not go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> so uh, I would um, like to ask, um, oh, sorry, Vanessa, you wanted to say something? I was just going to jump in to say, yeah, the one big thing for me, one big difference, I think for everyone too, and it goes without saying, but um, Super Wish was our first show that we produced during COVID, which made it uh, unbelievably uh, different than any show we uh -huh. had done in the past because um, this one, I guess, circling back to the development questions is for a quick second too. This one, um, Super Wish was in development for just over three years, which I know sounds like a really long time, but um, it, development is a magical, a magical creature. And it's something different um, to every project, right? So three years mm -hmm. in development wasn't us focused on this one thing every single day for three years. It was starts and stops. And we worked with the wonderful team at Nelvana before um, you know, we moved over to Red Knot and started to work with DKLA as well. But we were working on development when the world shut down in 2019 and all our production crews were moved um, out of house, well, to our house, I guess, <laughs> moved two houses. Um, and um, that's when we got our green light. So we mm -hmm. were already at home working on our different productions when Super Wish got its green light. So this was the first production where everything from doing those initial creative meetings with Discovery Kids, with Red Knot and Pat Burns, um, the captain of our ship. She, uh, it was all done completely from our homes. And in fact, Daniel, I don't even know when we were in the same room as you. Adrian and I were not in the same room right. together for a year and a half from mm -hmm. green light all the way through, which made it every single step of production had to be set up differently, right? Our records, our story, our um, story summits, everything you could think of. Our po Once we got to post, we were doing it. Um, anim or Daniel, I know you had to set up the animation. So Pipeline Studios was, um, they did half, 50% of the animation on this one. So we had to set up how we were working with them all in a virtual way. So it was very different from any production we had done in the past because of that new, blazing new trails. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that actually answers the question <clears throat> that I was going to ask you. It's like I was going to throw the same question. Like, how, how did it differ um, to any other uh, productions you guys have worked on in the past? Uh, Adrian, you have anything to add to that same question? Oh, uh, how did it differ? <laughs> well, you know, I think this one, the big difference on this one was obviously that Vanessa and I created it. And, you know, right. we've worked yeah. on many, many productions in the studio that come to us from other creators or, or other uh, broadcasters. And they, they come with specific visions, which are great. Mm -hmm. But to experience a production that they can't, it's your brainchild, right? And, and you know, Vanessa and I also, we doubled as, as showrunners on this. So we had our hands on uh, every aspect of production, even to uh, you know being brought in for enterprises decisions and 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 marketing and that sort of thing so 
yeah, I think that was the the big difference on this one was just having having that over over arcing uh, input, which was fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we still there were still moments in time when even Vanessa will attest to there was hey I like this well I like this you know and, and we, there was there was decisions to be ironed out mm -hmm. but what a fun ride absolutely yeah. fun fun ride on the whole development nice awesome cool uh, so <clears throat> what was uh, your your process and um, are the process of um, for adapting you know the Jesse Cameron's illustrations to the character designs for like a TV production. Oh, good one. Um, we have visuals for this. Yeah, we too. actually have some. We have some. We have some visuals we could put up. Maybe put them up while I'm <laughs> chit chatting. Let me fire um, <laughs> so, you, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so during during an early pitch, these are terrible drawings. My apologies. <laughs> you know what? The, those drawings there those were awesome oh, drawings. Yeah. <laughs> those are those, those are so done. Fun. Those are done on the go train on a little pad. Oh yeah, where'd they go? We lost them. You can't see them. No, they're no, just are they on a different like, screen. No. We uh, see chorus, the logo. I can see all your personal emails. Yeah. Oh. All your confidential no. stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, they disappeared. Anyway, yeah. Okay, oh. yes. So you just need to advance. You're on slide two. Okay. So if you just advance for maybe we can. Yeah, there you go. go. These were these were done in preparation for uh a kind of a pitch promo that we were putting together. So I actually, these are little, little sketches that I would do on the side of a script uh, that mm -hmm. Vanessa had wrote. And and uh, I did these on the GO train. So they're surprisingly stable for a bumpy ride. Awesome. Um, awesome. And you can see Jesse and Jesse and his friends are a little bit older and the designs are a little crappier because they were done a long time ago. But when, when you're, when you're designing a show for pitch, you're, you're getting the essence of things and, and, it, and, You'll notice a lot of the images are are very uh, uh, what's the term awesome. narrative narrative yeah. awesome they're very narrative <laughs> in their presentation <laughs> and that right. and it it's not until the concept is accepted you can see the the show used to be called loot bag that's um, right early title early mm -hmm. title uh, and it's not until we start working with the development team and and really again I can't say it enough how much how often we have to keep in the back of our brains that we're we're zeroing in on a product that is for an audience and, and you know never forget who your audience is mm -hmm. right it, it it's a terrible production that alienates their audience so when we when we go into development for production we're honing in on that so that that's when the characters back to your question that's when the characters kind of get simmered down to mm -hmm. something that's appealing marketable uh, uh, yeah. I, I don't know any other words you could add to that, Vanessa. I'm not sure, but well, preschooly too, right? Like it, yeah. there's a slide that Daniel had just showed. Are you able to go back one sec, Daniel? Yep. If you don't mind? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so your bottom line up here. This was a comparison for um, the broadcaster when we first started working on it. The bottom line is Adrian's original six to eleven. Um, sweeping saga style of designs. And then the top is your first pass at trying to yeah. bring them down a little bit closer to preschool. The eyes are bigger. They're just a little more huggable, I guess, mm -hmm. but it's just yeah, bringing them, the journey of bringing them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and believe me, the, the, and this is the two examples, slide, but there was maybe 15. There were many. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the next slide, of course, this is where we landed. These are the characters that you would see on TV and they're um, definitely pushed more towards a younger audience. Mm -hmm. um, same characters, you can tell who they are. They just have um, little sensibilities about them that have been aged down. The biggest change, of course, I don't know if anyone noticed, is Bon Bon. He is screen right. Um, our pinata went from being a donkey to being a chicken. That was a major design shift. Yes. Um, he had the biggest change. Earth shattering design. <laughs> this guy was fun to animate. <laughs> chicken. Bon fun bon. to watch. He was a, he was a, a team favorite. Yeah. Yeah. And well, then. Oh, sorry. Just that one little yep. addition to that is when kind of as we entered into production with these guys too, they they went kind of under they underwent um, kind of one final little tweaks and adjustments, and that's when Dan Daniel came on and and you know me asking questions like, hey, if if I you know just bring the features in a little bit more, does that does that make uh, big head rotations or the subtleties of emotion easier and that sort of thing. And, and that's where kind of, yeah, that's in 
answered in reverse. That's where it kind of ties into what Daniel was saying. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, could you speak on a little bit more about the the switch from like the donkey pinata to the the chicken? Like what prompted that uh, change? Uh, <laughs> if you yeah. can speak on it. Yeah, oh, I can. I remember I can. what it was. I know what, I remember it, was. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, right, go ahead. Uh, we had, we had, we had started off with a donkey, uh, through all the development and our donkey design was, uh, similar close to a llama design from a famous, uh, video game. Franchise. Slightly famous video game. People may have heard of called uh, Fortnite. Yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. I'm saying that and it was slipping my brain. I couldn't even remember. So, you know, you, you do that through development. You don't, yeah. you, you're, you're con cautious and conscious of, of what's out there and right. sometimes you have to pivot a little bit mm -hmm. um and and for us it was it was a matter of making sure that the, those pivots didn't compromise what our concept was there's a whole lot of c words i'm throwing out but um <laughs> this was so it, a chicken this, oh sorry no go ahead i was just gonna say this was an amazing change like a very lucky um happenstance for us i guess because um the donkey bon or the pinata whose name is bon bon in the series was always meant to drop trinkets. It's a part of the series. Every episode, Bon Bon drops a trinket and the trinket is usually something kids would find in a loot bag, mm -hmm. hence the original title. Um, and then the kids would help that, help use that to help them solve the problem of the day, so to speak. So when we switched to Bon Bon, I don't remember who it was, but somebody had pointed out that it could just be an egg that is laid. And uh, so every episode, Bon Bon lays an egg and the egg cracks open and it's this wonderful moment we're going to show you after. But it just worked perfectly. Like, it wouldn't have been as good if it were a donkey. Yeah. Well, For a brief moment, it was a donkey laying an egg. But... I just want to throw in, too, that animating a two-legged bird is way easier than animating uh, yeah. a four-legged donkey. <laughs> I was going to say. And Grateful for the that. <laughs> I was going to say that must have been like, oh, thank you. Two legs instead of four. That's and awesome. it would fly sometimes, so that was even the better. Didn't yeah. have to touch the ground. <laughs> awesome. So um, uh, are there any, like... Uh, like favorite uh, scenes that you're most proud of um, that you would like to share? Um, do you have any oh. that you want to show? My, my, hey, do. Hey, this is a perfect segue because mine's <laughs> the, mine's the bonbon bon moment. <laughs> awesome. So the bonbon bon moment occurs in every episode. Um, mm -hmm. Again, like Vanessa explained, when the kids are in need of a little uh, mystical help, so actually we could share that don't we have that we do but before you cue it up i want <gasps> to say that i married i married because originally your favorite scene was the if there was an effect scene so oh just throwing a little plug here our yes. effects team um andy powell and raymond pang they are amazing effects on this show mm -hmm. and they are nominated for a canadian screen award for their effects oh, next week so if anyone and here I will just has go a ahead vote and say, <laughs> It's usually live action effects. So they're the only animated series in the category this year. And we looked deal. back as far as 2017 and we had not seen an animated series. And anyways, so Andy and Raymond, um, good luck to them next week. And I married up the, you're going to see the Bon Bon clip, but you're also going to see that clip that you loved, Adrian, from yes. that episode where he flies. I love the part camera. where Jesse comes forward on the, the big staff. You'll see it. It's good. Yeah. Awesome. So hopefully it's called the lava. The Behind the, the scenes, uh, Ghost will throw up our. Yay. Here we go. This is getting tough. How are we supposed to cross this stuff? Bon bon magic egg, pinata chicken, magic egg, bon bon. A glow stick? <laughs> Such raw power! This trinket has potential! Sure does! Awesome. Nice. Yeah, that part Yay. when Je when Jesse comes forward to camera there, I'm like, yeah, that's so cool. I love yeah. it. <laughs> so fast. Amazing. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, that bonbon I... scene took a long time to find too. I feel like we didn't use storyboard that one, Adrian. Yes. Didn't we make you storyboard it a million times? A handful of times because we knew it was going to be in every single episode. And a little little tidbit of information: uh, Vanessa and I wrote the song for the bonbon. <laughs> That was oh. our, that's our song. The writing. lyrics. We oh, the lyrics. the lyrics. Tim Tim Gunfrey wrote the song. That's we true. Wrote the, that's lyrics. the lyrics. 
<laughs> I could totally details, tell that details. That's another scene that the animators definitely have that song stuck <laughs> in their head. <laughs> that's well. Where he does his dance. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So uh, that you spoke about the storyboarding just now. So um, could you give us a little insight into how that went, like before it actually got to the animation stage? Because personally, I love to hear storyboarding uh, stories. <laughs> if I could repeat that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could. I could speak a little bit to that. Um, mm -hmm. Storyboarding, uh, specifically, actually, this ties into the the pitch and and our initial promo that we put together. Um, as well it happened to be a moment in time when 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 we could spend a bit of bit of time playing with some of the new new t tips and tricks that are that are in storyboard pro mm -hmm. and um one of them for me and again i'll explain this and somebody will probably say that was available years before that but i hadn't used it yet and just that opportunity <laughs> to take advantage of of uh the z depth in the storyboard oh, yeah. as well mm -hmm. and and fooling around with character rotations in storyboard pro with with panning elements just just to, to to make things really dynamic and i know that we we ended up with one of those scenes making it into uh the first episode wasn't it um yeah i don't have we... that clip anymore though oh, we don't no, have that clip i have I have my scene clip, but that one I don't have. No, you can that's... describe it. Yeah, no, and, and what it was is it was a rotation of the characters as the as we were panning a background and it had a whole other element to it, which worked really beautifully. But the point being there is that we were able to kind of iron out the, the technical details of it in Storyboard mm -hmm. Pro because Storyboard Pro is so robust at that moment in time. So mm -hmm. it really, uh, yeah, it really provided... Um, a leg up, I guess, going into animation. Um, nice. But the storyboard process, yeah, probably not that that uh, different from many other productions. Yeah. Um, we like to we like to have a little more posing done, as a lot of directors do, and I'm guilty of it myself when I mm -hmm. when I storyboard. It's so easy to just hey, duplicate, change. You know, it's yep. so we really took advantage of a lot of that of that stuff um, mm -hmm. just to to. Uh, really fill out the animatics if we had a sample of animatic to share you'd probably see that it's it's pretty keyed well, out oh well, i have a piece you have one you have my... a little piece awesome so we oh. can have a look at Vanessa's oh i hope it's keyed out or i'd be lying it's, probably I was gonna not say, it might not be it might not be no uh, uh, my favorite scene in the series was um a, i loved all the musical numbers there was 16 of them, I think, in the season. Mm -hmm. um, so I picked that as one of my favorite scenes because there's a few of them, but one in particular is it's going to air next week. I think it hasn't aired yet. We'll sneak peek. Awesome. But it's where our bad dude gives you his own personal backstory or his motivation, I should say, for why he hates birthdays um, in the form of a Broadway musical type song. So I picked that one, but the clips I put together um, kind of show you a little bit of the process oh, for sweet. anyone who doesn't know. Oh, um, we've yeah, we've got the, so when we would get a script in that indicated a song, we would bring our um, amazing music producer, Laura Nikolic, into the loop and the song would be written first. And then we would record the talent singing the song when we record the script. So when the storyboard artist got the nap pause, it was in there. And then they would storyboard it, obviously, and it would go to final animation. So rather than just um, show you the final clip of animation, I'm going to show you a little bit of each of those stages. Um, you have to excuse my COVID hair. Please remember that we were all locked in our houses for a long time. What's this COVID? But it's called... I don't have so that problem. Clip... <laughs> now, what's this hair thing? You're speaking of? Awesome. So hopefully you can get Vanessa's clip um, up so we can see her COVID hair. Let's <laughs> see what this uh, looks like. And then um, I have a uh, ballad of a bad balloon. <sighs> Oh boy. Here we there go. Super Wish record, the final record. And we've got Corey Doran in the booth singing The Ballad of a Bad Balloon for episode 26A. I'm good at being bad. I've got henchmen and an evil plan and a super bouncy pad. But I'm just a simple dude who wants the one we thing. It's small. Too totally and too fully ruined birthday for you all. Too great for Birthdays are the worst days. Get rid of them, I say. Birthdays are the worst days. I'll make those humans pay. Cause when I destroy birthdays, then the whole wide world will see there never was a better, meaner, eviler balloon than me. <laughs> Come on, Glenn.
let's go. Ha, chip doo ba Oh, no more cakes, no games, no fun. The party's over, kids, it's done. Cause when I destroy birthdays, then you're finally gonna see them never. I have a problem with that. Oh, that was amazing. Oh, man, that was so good. <laughs> I have to go watch this show now. Awesome. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you'll have these the world. stuck in your head now. <laughs> oh, 100%. Like, and if you don't mind me saying, like, it um, made me remember um, another one of my favorite characters from, um, oh, geez, uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie Boogie. Like he had that same oh, kind of yeah, uh, yeah. that so that's really awesome. I love, it gave me a little bit of nostalgia to to um, that movie. Cool. So that's awesome. The music, nice. the music and the songs on the show were actually really fun. I could mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. I'm just cooking dinner one night and I'm humming it as I'm cooking dinner. <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that too, man. Like just as, becomes part of your life, honestly, yeah. um, animating on these yeah. shows sometimes. So, Daniel, did you have a favorite clip that um, you're most proud of? Yes, unfortunately, it couldn't be uploaded. But uh, <laughs> it was it was going, it was, uh, hey, if you want to see it, watch the show. It's on episode one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no. no money, um, no funny. You go watch. This, this was cool because it went through an evolution. Uh, and I was brought on to, to help on the promo um, I think like uh, partway through it. And uh, I'm fortunate that Adrian trusted me with his shot. Uh, it was when the, the kids walk over to, the, to this uh, this ridge and it it's like a camera rotation around Jesse, I think for the promo, it was just the one character. Uh, so we really had to use those those tools that we had, the deformers and everything mm-hmm. to actually spin Jesse, but make it look like the camera was going around him. And hmm. uh, and then in the, the, the show during production, that scene actually involved uh, the the full main cast, uh, so challenging. But uh, and it went through many uh, iterations and revisions and back and forth uh, with Adrian. Uh, but I think we nailed it, and uh, it looks really cool. Like it's um, it's uh, how do I describe it? It's it's like a it's like a moment, right? And it's like here's this world, and here, take a look. And even the characters are like, whoa, like if they walk over to the edge of the cliff and they look out and they're like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. So just kind of like a little bit of a, like what to expect. It's a great way to, to, to launch the series. Like, you know, this is the first episode. Here we are. Now take a look at what we're in for. So that was, nice. that mm-hmm. was really cool. Awesome. Um, could you also uh, speak a little bit or describe uh, Super Wish's um, animation pipeline? And anyone can feel the free to jump in at this point. Do we had a little talk about the you know storyboarding process, but when it got to you know animation, like what what was that part of the pipeline like? Uh, Daniel, for example. Um, it was uh, well, yeah. I can, yeah. Go, I can go into a lot of detail. Uh, <laughs> I'll be getting water. I'll be back. <laughs> We with there's a uh, I would meet with with uh, Adrian early on just to get a sense like I think I said this earlier get a sense of the show the characters what to expect he'd send me some reference uh, things to look at um, uh, ideas to work with and then uh, myself and I, we had a, a like a I think maybe half the team started on the show we get we get some ramp up time and so we produce some some tests and some examples and be like, hey, is it more like this? How's this working? And then you give us feedback and we'd basically iron out the style of animation um, mm. that that uh, was looked for, that was that that was wanted. And uh, and then I'm very fortunate that Adrian trusted me a lot. <laughs> he was <laughs> he would it, it's he would chime in uh, like he, he would didn't micromanage, but when he would chime in, it was like like you know you, the, it was golden like it was all like Aww. like like the words were just like oh here's like it was just all great information to use and apply so mm-hmm. even though it maybe was infrequent i think we chat we chat at least once an episode maybe a little bit more yeah. than that but uh getting his feedback was uh, very valuable and then mm-hmm. obviously we apply that going forward and then each episode you know looks better than the last so mm-hmm. you can see that evolution throughout Nice. Uh, so Adrian and, and Vanessa, like when, like, I'm going to throw a term out here. Um, when I was working, it, doing animation, 
like we had like our dailies that we'd have to throw up like how often did you guys like look at those and what were your impressions of them when you saw them it we we didn't have dailies per se but there, mm -hmm. in in our in our internal system there's there's a there's a database that we could, mm -hmm. I, you know i as a director i would always kind of I let I try to let Daniel do his job as the animation supervisor, but I'm not. Right. It's kind of like a hey, it's first thing in the morning. I'm going to go on and just snoop around type of thing, whether <laughs> Daniel knew it or not. Type of you know. <laughs> and then I'd be giving him notes on stuff, and he'd be going, "Yeah, I haven't addressed that yet. Thanks a lot for bringing that up." <laughs> so, um, awesome. But yeah, it, it it was. I don't know. It, it was pretty seamless right from seamless and easy right from the get-go in in that we did have a enough ramp up time on this series which was fantastic mm -hmm. like then Dan, daniel said we there was that communication about um you know walk cycles all that you know that standard production stuff but you know mm -hmm. a part of that was and as, as for example um you know winnie winnie's the little cousin and she's got little short legs and and mm -hmm. jesse's got longer legs and there's everybody that knows animation will know where i'm heading is that you know if, <laughs> if their gates don't match up they can't travel together and you know so a lot of those early discussions were you know i don't mind if their gates don't match up if, if mm -hmm. jesse's if jesse's pulling away from winnie that's what would happen in real life right. and and i i like those kind of nods to the to a, a character's inner thinking and inner working. And mm -hmm. what that meant is that for Winnie to catch up, she would have to do a little hop skip, a little, a little catch up move. And it yeah. just, mm -hmm. Daniel and I worked together Cute. on those, those type of points. And mm -hmm. I'm a massive fan of how that brings a, a, a series to life. It, it's, mm -hmm. you don't notice it, you know, the characters mm -hmm. are walking together, but you, you do see that there had to have been some sort of an internal thinking on Winnie's part to mm -hmm. say, I need to take a couple quick steps to catch up to Jesse. And, and right. it just adds a, a different layer. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I would classify that as part of the animation pipeline because it was so important right off the top. Yeah. And, and walk cycles are definitely like a very big key factor in terms of developing a character's personality as well. So yeah. that little stuff will, like nuances will definitely add to the the character also so that's yeah great. that's one example like uh, the rest of them I, there's probably two or three for each character that kind of fall under that same banner absolutely yeah mm -hmm. awesome and vanessa what, what was it like seeing like each of the episodes getting produced and your your writing coming to life can you speak on that a little bit um it was awesome <laughs> <laughs> i like adrian and i connected so jumping onto your answer as well, we would connect every day. We weren't together in the studio, but we would have virtual meetings every, whether we had meetings scheduled or whether we just like my teams would start to ring because Adrian just snooped in Daniel's files and found something awesome that he'd <laughs> want me to look at. Or Davian, our amazing art director would have just painted something that was incredible. And all the way through production, I know I could gush about the team, but all the way through production, every single step got better, which is the way it's supposed to be in production. That's the way it usually is. but it just it felt amazing on super wish because we kind of had an idea of what we wanted it to be when we pitched it but then all these other ideas come in and they all just kind of fell into lockstep everyone that joined our team stayed the course they were on the we joked that we were you know the fellowship of the wish together but they just plussed it like right mm -hmm. through to music which we don't even have enough time i could talk forever about the music on super wish also nominated for a csa next week. <laughs> neil awesome. parfit but just seeing every step, it got better than I think we could have thought, we could have wished for. It just it, and sometimes people would think of things that we we genuinely hadn't thought of, and it would be a complete fanboy, fangirl moment mm -hmm. to see that kind of take on new life. So it was awesome. Awesome, sweet. Um, and I get the sense like as I listen to you talk, like you're saying like this this whole like family structure came together even though you had a lot of people working remotely uh, correct so yeah it, it, the, that situation and i've experienced it myself in studios like uh i would say that was one of the the best things that came out of covid just letting studios see that even if you're far apart there's still ways to connect mm -hmm. and work together and produce really awesome stuff like this so that's that's really cool um, and in Definitely. terms of, of production, I just want to take a step back. I know we talked about um, the master controllers already in um, 
in Harmony, but were there any other tools of that Harmony um, has that really helps um, get the the production um, moving and flowing? For sure. And can you even talk about uh, Storyboard Pro to like some of the tools that were in there that help you get the storyboards and animatics to your animators and and such. So yeah, Danny, what do you what do you think? Uh, definitely. Uh, there was there's a lot of little uh, I don't know how to call it, plugins or scripts or uh, just to help uh, streamline some of the processes. Uh, and I want to show I show this to my team when we start off. Um, just so you know that you don't have to like hunt for things like there's always there's there's many ways of doing the same thing and we always trying to find the most efficient way right um i'm gonna speak to some people who are probably in animation but you know how many clicks per minute are you doing and can you right. whittle that something that takes five clicks can you whittle it down to one or two right mm -hmm. and so uh we share that information amongst animation uh animation teams uh different artists and yeah there's 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 great tools for the to the to uh, adjust the timing curves, right? Mm -hmm. And then to put that curve on twos. And right. then uh, the quick select sets, uh, change the line thickness, like, and animate the line thickness. And those, those are like some of the, 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 the more well-known ones. There's, a, there's other tools, so probably some that I'm not even aware of, but they really allowed us to, to make that process very efficient. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, like one time we, you know, on close-up shots, I'm sure everyone's experienced this in a, in a studio production, even if you're doing your own work on in, in Harmony. That line looks really thick. How do we make that thinner? Okay, well, we'll make it thinner. Mm -hmm. And then during a camera move, and Adrian's like, can we do this? I was like, yes, we can do this. All right, done. That's... <laughs> <laughs> We're not worried about close-ups and camera moves anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that really helped. That really helped. Awesome, cool. Um, I wanted to ask, too, um, because it's something that I've always been really like curious about. Now, myself, I was a rigging supervisor um, at Big Jump. I supervised um, Trailer Park Boys that season two. Um, so, nice. but from an animator, um, animation director's um, point of view, like what was it like to develop the the animation bible or animation guide for your animators um, to use to, you know, keep the style like constant um, throughout the show? Well, we had a lot, a lot of the. Oh, yes a lot of input uh, from Adrian, mm -hmm. a lot of reference to work with, share that with the team, and then uh, make sure everyone's on style. So mm -hmm. uh, we would we would try to get in the, the, like not so much dailies, but when, when scenes would come into my level, uh, my approval level, um, mm -hmm. just try to get the person, the animator back on style or when they nail it, uh, let them know this is one of the things that was really nice uh, when Adrian was <laughs> snooping around, he would, he would actually send some positive we do, we do, okay, here are the retakes, guys. And then, you know, scene five looks great. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so that was, that was, yeah, that I, was I always wanted the retakes to come in and the, and the team, <laughs> I knew the team would be like, there's like 60 retakes, but like 10 of them are, this is awesome. Gold star. Like, but it, it, those, those moments are key because then the animators know what to keep doing, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Too much. We would collect those and yeah. share them with the team. So, just to your what you were saying earlier, like how to keep everyone on style, we get this feedback, and then I was able to put that all together, share it with the team. Everyone appreciated. It. Everyone wants to see like how how should I make my my animation look? What's what's the goal to aim for? What's the the movement the the style I'm going for? And just mm -hmm. to get that you know that process constantly, make sure that uh, everyone stays on track. So mm -hmm. yeah, feedback awesome. communication. Always yeah. very early on, there was your traditional pencil to paper documents. Like, hey, not too much question, just stretch, watch out for this. You know, Balloonicus right. could do this, but Jesse can't do that. And yeah, it's it was just a whole lot, an onslaught of communication right off the get go. And then mm -hmm. just like Vanessa said, fine tuning it, honing it as we move forward is right. really good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so um, one of the final questions I have for you guys is like, do you have any advice for artists applying to work on a series like uh, Super Wish or trying to get in, you know, to studios, like any little tidbits or nuggets of, of advice that you can throw out there for, for the audience? Yeah, I can start with Adrian. Sure. Um... Advice, advice for, for, for animators specifically, for anybody applying for performance, uh, type stuff i always say we all know that an animation is an 
it's an exaggeration. We're taught in school mm -hmm. you know, through, the, through the illusion of life that it's, everything's an exaggeration, the rubber ball assignment. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we know how to do that really well. Mm -hmm. Everybody does. We're all taught that. But I think one of the things that, that, that may elevate somebody trying to enter into the industry or get a job on a, a new series, and we see this a lot, and Vanessa could probably speak to this, is that a lot of new series, a lot of networks are really they're really hungry for that emotional note that that those subtleties which is contradictory to, to what we've been taught but if you could show that in your like an animation reel mm -hmm. exaggeration should be there absolutely mm -hmm. but can you achieve those heartfelt moments um the the, the subtleties now, i i look for that as a director Mm -hmm. And if you could achieve those in a in a medium that's supposed to be exaggerated, that tells me that that you you might have something a little more special. Nice, awesome. And Vanessa, um, so I would say if you're applying to work on a show that's already on air, it's kind of a no brainer. But watch it, watch the show, so <laughs> yeah. that when you come in, you've got a frame of reference and you can speak to the style and have an opinion on it, if you liked it, why you thought you would be a good addition to the team. And if it's not a show that's on air, um, see, dig, see if you can find out what is it? Is it preschool four to seven? Is it preschool two to five? What type of a show is it? And don't be afraid to ask the producer or the hiring manager, can you tell me what I'm coming into, you know, interview for? Can you give me any information on the show whatsoever? Um, and then kind of look for comparables. It's just educate yourself on what's in the market in that in that genre, I guess, in that age demographic, so that when you go in, you can speak to what else, you have a frame of reference and context for what else is really knocking it out of the park in that um, in that demographic or that specific genre. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, Daniel, what about you? Um, I would say, uh, well, first of all, don't give up. Um, work on your art skills, work on your animation skills. And again, what, what Vanessa was saying, look at look at the reference, look at the show, study it. And to what Adrian was saying, performance is important. That's really tough. It's like uh, it's 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 subtle, and when it's done well, though, it's it's it really hits. Mm -hmm. um, put your best stuff at the front of your reel. You know, uh, we want to see, we want to we want to press play and be like, oh, I want to see more of this. Like <laughs> that's so. Don't don't save it for last. Put it right at the front. Mm -hmm. um, we like. Um, I've been fortunate to be in, in the position I'm in to be able to look at a lot of reels. Uh, and so to me, that's, that's, that's important, right? I want to get that, 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 uh, that impression right away. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if this is okay, but I save everything <laughs> that, that's been submitted to me for review. And uh, another, I guess another tip it would be, uh, you know, if, if uh, maybe if you're not successful, ask for feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. And if I see, you know, person That's A good. is real a second time, you know, I can be like, mm -hmm. oh, I can see the different. Mm. And usually it's on their website. Everyone's got a website at this point. And I can see the evolution. They put they put in the work, you know, they, they've done the studying. They're, they're, they're really serious about this. And mm -hmm. obviously, if it looks better, that's great. We're going to send a test and, and, and move forward. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I was been scrolling through um, some of the... Um, the chat here and we're seeing some really awesome uh, comments from um, our viewers here one of them uh, mike was saying it was amazing to see how far the designs have come from like loot bag and um i believe one person was asking for a crossover episode to the show and corn and peg <laughs> 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 so i don't know that might be uh, something that uh, you might get yes. think yes, about we will you do know? That. <laughs> <laughs> awesome and hi well, mike <laughs> and uh well i just want to say you know like thanks you guys for like taking your time out to come and talk about your really awesome looking show and um i really want to wish you guys all the best with your production so um yeah if you have any final words you know um before we depart um feel free to share them if not um Thanks once again for bearing with me as we went through our, you know, little stuff at the beginning and we actually made it through the end. We did it. Without oh, any no. problems. So. 
Awesome. Um, cool. I just, I want to say thank you for having us because this is always, we haven't seen each other in a little while because Super Wish Brat production in December. So it's good to see you, Adrian and Daniel. And thank you so much for having us. This is a great opportunity for us to come and chat about a show that we um, feel very passionate about. So thank you. And thanks yeah. for being a great moderator. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, you very much. much. I've been trying <laughs> so hard. Um, yeah, so awesome. So I guess we'll um, wrap it up here. I do myself have something to go and do. I have a demonstration of our really awesome software, um, Harmony, to go and Sweet. give. Um, so I'm going to be showing uh, another set of people how awesome um, Harmony is in producing stuff like this. So uh, once again, thanks. And amazing. Thanks. Thank you. I'll see you again. We'll talk thanks, again. everyone. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Bye. Bye. Bye.